All right, folks, what's going on out there in YouTube land? It's me, your boy, uh, back at Calgary Barbell, doing some form checking, because we're back at it. Uh, we were uh, we were out for a week there, a little knocked off schedule. I got COVID, uh, it fucking sucked. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it sucked for like two or three days. And then uh, I started coming back and I'm here now. So we're good, we're good to go. And we're gonna be back on track. We actually got some some exciting videos about the new space and all the developments with it coming over the next little week. We got th uh, next little while. We have three videos that are gonna be coming out that kind of detail uh, how we've put this place together so far. So we're excited to bring y'all along for that. But anyways, y'all are here for the form check. So let's get into it. Now, uh, last week we left off with Mr. Eric here. We left off with Eric and his squats. So uh, Eric's been lifting about five years. So he's been doing this for a while now. And he says that uh, some knee pain kept him from squatting for a while. Uh, this is 120 kilos for a set of five long paws on the last rep. Little little spicy, little uh, uh, saucy minx on the last rep. You know when you're feeling really good on a set and you're like, I'm going to pause this last rep. I think that's, uh, that's kind of where his head was at. And I, I, I dig that. So um, He said his hips are shooting up. His low back uh, tends to feel really stressed uh, as he progresses in, into higher weights. <clears throat> and he says that uh, he did, really doesn't feel much in his quads, but he does get a crazy low back pump from squatting. So I want to watch this through just one more time if I can find the mouse on the screen. Holy, what the hell? Anyways, uh, we're back, kind of. <clears throat> so uh, what I think one of one of your issues here is um, is going to be. Uh, I think I think you're really reaching. With, with your trunk, with your torso, you're going into overextension, you're trying to drive your chest and your head up really hard. And uh, I think what we're gonna need to do is brace a little more ribs down. We're gonna need to try to think about, <clears throat> think about your ribs and your pelvis and having a connection between the two. Like the length, if you were to have strings right here, not changing throughout the lift. So your torso, maybe it's easier this way because I can talk to the mic, your torso tilting instead of doing this, right? You're, you're, right now you're extending, you're going to a lot of extension, which I think is why we're feeling uh, a lot of stress on the, uh, on, the, on the back and maybe why we're not feeling a whole lot on the quads and why our depth is kind of on the line. <clears throat> so I think if you can commit to a little bit more ribs down brace, allow yourself to kind of tilt and get into the habit of that hinge more as opposed to driving your knees forward and just trying to be super upright on the way down, Embrace the lean, I like to say, um, when I'm cueing this a lot of the times. But I think that's probably gonna be the biggest thing you can do to try to get a little more <clears throat> consistent squat and definitely a lot less uh, of like a back pump and, and feeling like your back's being taxed more than your quads. Um, so that's, that's my biggest recommendation there. Yeah, try that out and I hope that that helps. Wow, we're getting totally keyed out on my uh, my hat here, that's kind of cool. All right, Brandon's doing some bench press next. Now Brandon sent this in, he says he's been benching for 13 years. So this guy's been at it for a long time. Uh, this is a lift from IPL Worlds, uh, 402 pounds. He said this was a state record for him, so congrats on that, dude, that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> but I watched this earlier actually, and I think the biggest thing you're doing is you're just not really setting up, man. I think you could do a lot more in terms of creating a bit of an arch, uh, trying to set your back, trying to bring your chest up to the bar, uh, and just like really kind of preparing yourself more before that bar comes out of the rack. Uh, and I think there's I think there's a fair bit you can do there to try to get, uh, Dylan just pushed this chair into the shot, but uh, there's a lot more you can do to try to get braced and ready before you unrack the bar. Right, because as the bar comes out, eh, we're kind of loose in the upper back. The arms are super extended, and the uh, the shoulder blades are are super protracted. So I'm not I'm not worried that the arms are extended. Right, we need that before we get the press command. But what's what's happening is we're also as we come out of the rack. Let's see if I can show you like this, as opposed to like this. Right, pull those shoulder blades back, drive that chest up to meet the bar, and. Um, uh, I think that's probably gonna be one of the biggest things you can do is just work on that setup. It also looks like your head's lifting up and <clears throat> I don't know why this is such a, a thing. 
Like, I'm not sure why so many people do this. Um, as, as they come down, they lift their head up. But when you lift your head up like that, your chest is gonna collapse, right? You're gonna create more range of motion. You're gonna lose shoulder and upper back position when you bring your head up like that. So to me, uh, the, the head up thing is just really kind of shooting yourself in the foot. And uh, I, I think you can definitely keep the head back, keep that chest driving up. The press itself actually looks pretty good. We maybe lose a little bit of shoulder position, right? So you could potentially keep that back a little tighter, keep a tiny bit more tuck for the first, you know, split seconds off the chest. Um, Cause the, we, we do see the elbows kind of like flare out pretty early off the chest here, right? <clears throat> So pretty good bottom position. We sink a fair bit on the touch. We press it up. It starts to get a little bit stuck and then the elbows flare really, really hard. Um, and a lot of the times when the elbows flare like that, it's because we're losing shoulder position. So we run into this really exaggerated sticking point in the middle, instead of being in this more smooth position, where we're able to maintain external rotation of the shoulder while allowing that elbow to flare a little bit, right? There's a difference between keeping this tight letting the elbow flare and this where the elbow, the shoulder comes out of position as the elbow flares. So <clears throat> yeah, hopefully some of that helps you out. I know you've been doing it a long time and uh, you know, you definitely got a great bench. So uh, I think there's, I think there's more that you can do. I think you can do it better. I think you can improve further. So I hope you do. All right. <clears throat> Up next is Olivia. Um, Olivia has been competing in powerlifting just this year. So she's just getting started with it. Uh, and she says her hips shoot up off the floor uh, is one of her biggest tendencies that she tends to run into. Um, <clears throat> and she says she misses some lifts, loses a lot of position because of it. Um, so this is 405 uh, on the bar, 405 pounds, which is uh, very, very respectful, uh, or yeah, very, very good, solid uh, amount of weight for a deadlift. Um, she says she's six foot tall, a little bit of longer torso and really likes conventional, doesn't like doing sumo, um, which is fair, you know? We can have our, our preferences. Um, let me get that to play again. Okay, so the biggest thing here, in terms of your start position, uh, I think number one, we're starting with the hips a little too low and we're starting with the knees a little too forward. So right now we're kinda like, it looks like a good position because we got this nice neutral back position. You know, the hips seem like they're in a good height but the hips are really far forward because the knees are really far forward. I think we could narrow the stance just slightly and that would allow us a better angle. If we looked at this from the front, I bet your shins kind of look like that, right? With the knee, you know, knees slightly inward. And I think if you narrow your stance a little bit, we look at this from the front, we're gonna see a little more straight up and down shin angle, uh, or maybe even like a little bit of an external rotation from the hip. <clears throat> And a lot of times it's gonna make it a little easier to get some, some power going from the posterior chain. Um, and it's gonna allow you to kind of root into that position so we're not losing that position as we start the lift. Because what happens here, I bet you, is as we start to pull, the knees come in just that little bit more and the hips come up quite a bit, right? So this is a pretty decent difference in the hip height before this bar actually leaves the floor. So <clears throat> despite saying that your knees are a little bit too far forward here, I think we actually have to try to keep the knees forward. So we're gonna make those stance changes. So the shins are a little bit more up and down. We're gonna bring the grip, uh, the, the foot position uh, slightly more narrow. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find a similar hip height, but we're gonna focus on finding hip and hamstring tension. Now, this is another video uh, that I wanna make specifically about helping lifters find hip height in the deadlift. Cause I think lifters actually get um, erroneously too concerned with hip height and not concerned enough with finding a position where the hips are in tension. We need hip tension, not necessarily a specific hip height. And I think that gets us away from making common mistakes like hips too low or hips too high because some lifters are gonna pull better with a high hip. Some lifters are gonna pull better with a lower hip. The more important thing is that we pull from a position of maximum tension and tightness in the hips and hamstrings, the posterior overall, uh, when we start the pull. So <clears throat> I think we need to uh, keep a little bit more tension on the forefoot, on the front of the foot and through the toes so that we can keep these knees in good position. Uh, we need to keep this back locked in. We need to think about, you know, the cue of almost pulling the bar into you and trying to, trying to shorten the torso by pulling these shoulder blades down, trying to find a nice good lat contraction. We wanna imagine the lats just pulling all the way down into the hips, right? And we need to just be more patient, right? When we're doing the deadlift, I want you to imagine you're doing a leg press, 
I want you to pull yourself into position. I want you to get everything nice and tight, find all that hip tension we were talking about. And then I want you to imagine that you're doing a leg press. I don't want us to end up in this like stiff legged position where the hips come up high. I want us to think about pushing the floor away. And a lot of times that's gonna help you keep your knees a little more forward, help you use your quads off the floor. And then we don't see that loss of position. Now overall, <clears throat> despite the loss of position, the lift itself, once the bar starts moving, uh, as far as what you can do from the position that you've got is fantastic. You've got a great deadlift, you're strong as heck. Uh, I think if we make a few modifications to how we're starting the lift, it's just gonna, we're just gonna get a lot more out of it. Cause you do, you do recover super well from that. Sorry, I'm showing y'all um, songs that Dylan's got picked out for our upcoming videos. But um, yeah, if we can get a bit better start position, uh, I think it's gonna go a long ways in terms of uh, being able to just lift a little more, maintain a little bit better position. But like by this point, we've got it pretty much sorted out. The timing of the lockout, everything like that is is wonderful. So keep it up in that regard. All right, <clears throat> Lukasik uh, is doing, sorry. I think Lukasik is his last name. Uh, Dylan punched it in. I think his first name is Votek. Vojtek? Vojtek? I don't know. Anyways, uh, he's Polish. I should be able to pronounce that, but I can't. Anyways, uh, 20 years old powerlifting for four months, lifted for about two years, took a year uh, break, uh, and, and has been back for four months. So squat here is 170. Uh, he weighs 77 kilos. He says his technique since he came back has been bothering him. He doesn't feel like he's braced enough uh, and he's not sure of his depth. So let's take a quick look through and see what we can see. So in terms of the bracing, I think the first thing we need to make sure is that we feel braced, we feel tight, we feel locked into the bar, the bar's glued on the back, we're holding it on the back, not in the hands, all those things that go hand in hand with, with tightness and bracing. Um, the important thing is that those are all happening uh, when we unrack the bar. When we unrack the bar, I want it to feel so solid. If the unrack doesn't feel good, I feel like that uh, kind of sets not the greatest tone for the squat or for the set or whatever. So we have to get the unrack nailed down. We need to take our time here, um, setting up into the bar, making sure that the shelf is tight, making sure that your brace is on. Uh, foot position looks good for the unrack, but I can tell at this point already, we're, we're a little wobbly, a little shaky. So <clears throat> we just really need to work on making sure that we're confident, making sure that we're as tight as we can be before we unrack. Cause I think that'll go a long ways towards making the squat feel better. If the unrack is better, generally the squat feels better. So the next thing we do is we do this, this kind of like really interesting overextension where we kind of like pull in and pull the lats down and then we start the squat and we kind of undo all of that. So <clears throat> two things. Number one, if that moment of extension is where you feel braced, then you need to maintain that better. If that moment of extension is extraneous and we feel more braced once we come out of that and back into a more neutral position, then we need to not do that extraneous movement before we start the squat. <clears throat> In terms of the descent, everything looks good. I think depth might be feeling a little bound up because of that extension. So again, a little bit more ribs down might help you get a little bit more depth. The other thing I'd look at is stance. Looks like heels are coming up as we hit the hole here. So if the heels are coming up, all of our weight is shifting forward. So we can cue the lifter back onto the heels, but we can also just look at potentially widening the stance a little bit. A lot of the times uh, for, for, I would say, uh, a large portion of lifters, won't say all, because some lifters really like squatting narrow, but more narrow squatters, uh, a lot of the times are gonna feel a little bit more tightness, a little bit more rebound, a little bit more pop out of the bottom, and going wider, we're gonna need a little bit more stopping power. So what that is to say is that, you know, wider stance often will result in the lifter achieving depth easier. Um, sort of roundabout way of saying that, but generally for having depth issues, one of the first things I'll look at is, okay, can we move our stance even just slightly wider? And does that allow us to get depth easier? If not, you know, could be a laundry list of other things, but first and foremost, you know, you want to, you want to eliminate the low hanging fruit <clears throat> and you want to get the, uh, you know, the easy stuff checked off the list first. The other thing is as we hit the bottom there, we do lose a lot of tension, right? So we're seeing the elbows moving quite a bit as we change directions. Um, we're seeing you shift your gaze, so your head's moving uh, as you change directions. And I think because of that, 
you know, that's that's where the feeling of, oh, shoot, I lost my brace is coming from. Um, so we need to maintain more tension into the bottom. We need to maintain more tension as we change directions and specifically in the brace, in the lats, uh, in the shelf, in the upper back. <clears throat> it's very common to um, to end up losing a little bit of position into the bottom. And uh, I think that's the number one thing I would I would have you try to work on there. Uh, all right, Cutler now is doing some bench press. <clears throat> so, uh, Cutler is an ex-pro soccer player, which is kind of cool, lifting for six or seven years, and, and has kind of been working on the big three just the last two years or so. This is his third set of five, touch and go bench 105 kilos at uh, seven to eight RPE. And he says uh, he loses tightness in his upper back and in his legs, and, and seems to be in a bit of a bench plateau. So, <clears throat> generally, you know, the first thing we look at when we run into a plateau is going to be programming, right? If you're if you're not doing enough work, if you're not achieving enough uh, progressive overload, or maybe the stimulus isn't specific enough, or maybe it's too specific, uh, if it's not matching our recovery demands, all those kinds of things, um, then we're going to end up getting stalled out. So this is the part where I plug the, the Calgary Barbell Program uh, library, the Calgary Barbell Training app, because that provides you shoot, we're up to over 30 programs in it, including our new Path of Powerlifting series, which come in three, four, and five day per week variations, and come in low, medium, and high stress, so that you can modulate around as need be, you can find your sweet spot for both frequency and the overall amount of work you're doing, uh, and follow along with some great programs where a new version and a new progression comes out every 12 weeks, so it's pretty freaking cool. CalgaryBarbell.programs.app, check that out. Anyways. <clears throat> If we can be assured that it's not a programming deficiency holding you back from getting stronger, which generally, again, I think it is, um, I'm gonna offer some general technique advice. So number one, this toe picking oftentimes leads to a bit of instability in the legs and in the, the leg drive. So I would say drive the heels down into the ground, get your feet flat so you have a little bit more stability side to side. And I think that's gonna go a long ways for you. The other thing is, what are we trying to do with our leg, leg drive? What are we trying to achieve from our leg drive? What's our leg drive giving us in the bench press? A lot of people seem to think it's like a, a way to start the lift. It's this jolt. And that works for some people. Generally heavier lifters, um, generally lifters with shorter arms <clears throat> are going to bench with more of a, I guess we'll call it like a sink and heave kind of leg drive style, where there is a definitive like dumping of the bar into the chest really jolty leg drive and then they kind of catch it halfway through the range of motion. But I would say for somebody who looks a little bit more lean like yourself, we're probably going to want to use a, a lighter touch, a more controlled descent. And one of the biggest things that well, I'm always talking about this is learning to decelerate the bar, right? If we do not start to reverse the downward momentum of the bar on the way down, it takes us a lot more energy to reverse it at its sort of at, at our lowest and most disadvantaged biomechanically speaking position, which is when the bar's on your chest. But if you can start slowing that descent just before the bar gets to the bottom, then we have less momentum coming at us. Um, the inertia is easier to overcome in terms of reversing the direction of the bar. And uh, we can do ourselves a lot of good in terms of being able to better dictate the bar path off the chest, being able to drive it in the direction we want, which is generally gonna be back and up off the chest. Uh, and you'll notice anytime you touch a bench wrap and it goes out this way, it feels like crap. So <clears throat> that would be the, the next thing I would work on is, is learning to decelerate the bar better, even on touch and go bench. And I think there's a, a big misconception that touch and go bench means just sloppy benching. I'm not saying this is sloppy, but I think that is a general misconception is that like, oh, it's touch and go, nothing matters. But if you can do touch and go really, really well and have a nice light touch on the t-shirt, I think then it lends itself better to comp bench, which may or may not matter to you, but uh, I still think there's a, something to be said for having control in the bottom, control on the chest and uh, learning to decelerate the bar. Anyways, up next, we got Dan. Now, Dan is 16. He's been lifting for one year. He did his first powerlifting meet, totaled 502 and a half at 85. So, uh, strong dude, man, nice work. Um, so these are the things that Dan figures he needs to work on. Uh, in, his own, in his own words, <clears throat> I don't know why this isn't repeating very well, but 
In his own words, he needs to work on the slack pull. He says he needs to work on his hinge pattern. Uh, and he thinks he should get into a wider sumo stance. He thinks right now his shins are kind of, you know, in line with the, uh, with the rings on the bar. And he figures that might be too narrow. Now, I think it's going to be tough to say from the side angle if your stance is too wide or not. But, <clears throat> or sorry, too narrow or not. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this play through one more time, maybe two more times. And we're going to sign off on this video. I want everybody here to head down to the comments section below. Give us your top critiques for Dan's deadlift. What are the things that you think Dan could work on? If you've had issues with these things that he mentioned, the hip hinge, the slack pull, uh, and, and finding your ideal stance width, what are the things that you found helped you kind of, kind of get past those technical um, speed bumps, we'll call them. Um, go ahead and leave that in the comments section below, and I'm gonna start next week's Form Check Friday with Dan's video. I'm gonna give you all my two cents, and um, yeah. This is the other thing I wanted to maybe show y'all a little bit of. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, we should take some pictures of this stuff. Oh, look at all that. Look at that. Ooh, that's some nice stuff. That's some nice stuff. If you want it. Um, we've had it since November, so hopefully uh, we'll sell it to y'all soon. Uh, we're really excited about it. We think it's great, and uh, hopefully you do too. All right, that's it for me. Uh, we'll be back on next Friday. Uh, make sure to come by the live streams, 10 a.m. MST, twitch.tv slash Calgary Barbell. If you like this stuff, come get your technique looked at live. It's awesome. All right. Take it easy, everybody. And we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.